Mercury retrograde, one of the two most well-known astrology situations that most people know about, even if they don't know anything else besides their sun sign or their sun, moon, and rising, they, they know or have heard about and have their own ideas about Mercury retrograde. The other situation is Saturn return. Those are the two big things that um, non-astrological people have heard of or barely astrological people have heard of. And like many astrology ideas, um, there's some truth and a lot of fiction and misunderstanding uh, that goes along with, with these ideas like Saturn return and Mercury retrograde. When a planet turns retrograde, it doesn't actually go backwards, but it appears to go backwards because the revolutionary motion of the Earth overtakes, temporarily overtakes that planet. And it, from our point of view, it appears to go backwards. And this is like adjacent subway trains, like those of you who've been in big train stations, like Grand Central Station. I grew up in New York City, so my main association with big train stations is Grand Central. And I can recall instances where uh, more than one train is pulling out of Grand Central at the same time, or where we reach an adjacent track, we're out of the tunnel, and we're, um, or we're in a big multi-tunnel, or, or we're, we're above ground, where the train that I'm, I'm, I'm sitting by the window of the train I'm on and we're moving along and on the adjacent track, another train is moving along in the same direction as we are. And we overtake the other train. They don't stop moving necessarily, but they appear to be going backward because we're accelerating beyond them, but it takes a while and you can look and see the faces of a lot of those people. You can have these um, momentary, you know, love affairs and um, and anger sessions in the way New Yorkers tend to with these multi flashes that happen real quick. Their train never stops, but it appears to go backwards. That that's what we mean when we say Mercury retrograde or or Jupiter retrograde. It appears to go backwards. And in popular thought in modern legend, um, that's kind of a bad thing, or at least not a very good one. That's kind of a bummer. The line on this has to do with, especially don't sign any contracts on days of Mercury retrograde. Don't schedule any sensitive or important public talks. Um, don't sit down in a divorce court with your spouse, soon to be your ex-spouse and a bunch of lawyers and things like that. All things that have to do with communication and expression are frowned upon during times of mer Mercury retrograde. My favorite bit of insight regarding this came from a, a, a well-known historical figure who most people don't associate with astrology, Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner was a, a, a master psychic astrologer and many, many, many other things. Most people know him from having invented Waldorf education, which is still going around the world. But he was also um, an astrologer who conceived his own system of astrology. And um, there's this anecdote that at one public gathering, the gathering was ending, and a, an associate of Steiner's came up to him and said, so, I have watched you for years schedule your most sensitive and important talks 
on days of Mercury retrograde. Why would someone who knows as much about astrology as you know ever do anything like that? And reputedly, Steiner looked at the man and smiled and said, if I don't turn it around, who will? Now, that's my kind of astrology, because the day I met my teacher, the day I met the man who was going to be my teacher, William Lonsdale, in uh, Ross, California, in December of 1987, the day I met William and he gave me my first reading, he said to me, so you're thinking about becoming an astrologer? Well, I should know a thing or two about that. And if you're going to go in that direction, you need to know a couple things. One is most people who do astrology don't do the real version of it. They're phonies. If you want to do the real astrology, you need to know one thing above all. Don't ever think you know what Gemini is but be willing to find out what Gemini is with each new Gemini who comes along. And he didn't just mean Gemini. He meant all the signs. Don't, don't let astrology become a tight casting device. Don't get so scared of Mercury retrograde that you give it all of your power, that you give all your power away as if it's a holdover from the um, uh, Judaic Christian centuries of this big white god in the sky who's going to dictate to you. Don't, don't worship Mercury retrograde like that. And Steiner's response, if, if I don't turn that around, who's going to do it? That's taking, it's like looking at the dual meaning of a reversed tarot card. The, 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 the straight up meaning is always contained somewhere inside the reversed meaning. The the clear meaning is always contained somewhere in the retrograde meaning. As long as you don't retrograde yourself, as long as you don't get so turned around, you give all your power away to this predestined Mercury God who's going to scare the shit out of you for having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your boyfriend or going down to address um, a group of lawyers or something. And Steiner is saying, yeah, there's a sensitivity on those days when Mercury is retrograde. There's a turning inward on those days so that the normal, um, clear expression and communication of Mercury, it, it doesn't get to go straight out everywhere. It, it kind of goes around like a like a loop-de-loop, -loop, like on an amusement park ride. It, it is with a retrograde you're starting to go toward, in this case, Mercury's clarity, but you go scooping down and in, and you have to grab some other part of yourself first before the loop comes back around and this time completes itself and goes straight out. 